Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I'm very pleased to hear from our colleagues that we have a Coptic uh, uh, religious leader leading us in prayer this morning. That's, that's a wonderful, wonderful statement for us to make. Um, let me uh, suggest this. I, I worked in the White House with President Reagan at a time uh, when the National Endowment for Democracy became real. I mean, we, uh, I worked with a, with a speech writing team that uh, developed that concept in his speech before Parliament. And um, let me note that during that time period, uh, we were, Ronald Reagan, I think one of the reasons we won the Cold War is Reagan became the champion of democracy uh, and rather than repression as a way to meet communism. That was part of the basic theory. But let me note this, that what we have um, today uh, are alternatives between uh, if the bad guys win, what we have is a is what? Islamic dictatorships that will murder people in great number. And, you know, quite frankly, um, I think that it is when you have re some level of repression against groups of people in your society that want to institute a dictatorship, what we did is we used those people who wanted freedom and democracy against a communist regime. We emphasized that, and that's how we won the Cold War. But the fact is, those people in the institutes that we're talking about were pushing for democracy in communist countries, and what would replace, we were, we, in other words, the repressive people in those countries were the ones who didn't believe in democracy, and we were supporting, by, by having the same strategy in Egypt and other countries, we are ending up what, supporting and giving life to elements within that society that don't want more democracy. So I would suggest that pushing for uh, against restrictions, especially during a time when hundreds of, uh, uh, of Egyptian people are being murdered uh, or, or soldiers are being killed in a battle against radical Islam, at a time pushing them at that point to, to a standard, a democratic standard, that would be the, that we believe should be the standard in, in ordinary times, perhaps makes it more likely that there will be a repressive government rather than less likely. Meaning, in the end, I believe General Sisi, now President El Sisi, wants a democratic uh, Egypt. And uh, for us to undermine him now, uh, we might end up creating a, a horror story in terms of radical Islamic terrorism throughout the region, but also the people of Egypt will be less would be less free uh, uh, if, the, if the radical element, if the Muslim Brotherhood element succeeds. Now, with that suggestion, let me ask uh, about the blasphemy law. You mentioned the blasphemy uh, rules or law. How many people have been uh, pr prosecuted? Uh, for blasphemy laws in uh, Egypt? Uh, I believe that in recent years it's been in the dozens. In recent years yes, in dozens? Yes, it's been in the dozens. So that means last year maybe one? No, or, I think it was significantly more than that. Okay, well, I'll have to check five notes, then. But I think it was more ten. than five in the dozens. Okay, so in the dozens over a number of years. Tell me, uh, in the other parts of the Middle East, uh, how does that stack up with the rest of the countries in the Middle East? Well, first of all, Egypt has a much more, a much larger Coptic Christian population yeah. than uh, many other countries. Right. So the um, that's dynamics because they have are, relative freedom of religion compared to all the other countries in the Middle East. I think it's it's very troubling. I mean, a recent incident that sort of highlighted some of the dilemmas that are occurring in Sisi's Egypt today is that a group of Coptic Christian teenagers who filmed. I'm, hold on, hold on. I, I'm asking a question here. I don't want you to go on about your philosophy. We understand. I agree with, with, with what you're saying, but I'm asking a specific question. Doesn't Egypt look, rank really high up on the scale when compared to other Middle Eastern countries in terms of freedom of religion, blasphemy, et cetera? 
In, in some respects, there are positive signs and other respects. Is the answer are, yes or no? I, I think mean, it's a mixed picture. Okay. President Sisi has said some important right. things, but actions on the ground can continue all to be right, increasingly intolerant. All right, all right. I got a limited amount of time. That's why I can't let you go on. The bottom line is uh, I've been to the Middle East. We've all been to the Middle East. To compare Egypt under attack by radical Islamic forces that hate us, that would murder us, as well as murder all the people in Egypt that disagree with them, to compare uh, them to us and the rest of the Western world, uh, 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 Europe, is wrong. It's bad. It will result in more tyranny and not less. What is fair is to compare Egypt to the other Muslim countries in that region. And I know it sounds like you're very hesitant to say it. I'm not hesitant to say it. Egypt ranks way up there on the top of that scale. It's positive as compared to Qatar, as Saudi Arabia, uh, Bahrain, all of these countries uh, that we're talking about that, that you could compare it to legitimately, Egypt ranks it's an A plus compared to them. Now, I don't. I think it's totally unfair, especially when this country is under attack. Their people are being murdered. You got the soldiers being killed. Nine nine hundred soldiers. What would happen if Amer nine hundred American soldiers? By the way, in proportion, that's about uh, ninety thousand American soldiers being killed. Uh, and then to hold Egypt to that standard is wrong. And uh, Mr. Chairman, just indulge me in one more moment. I do not believe that radical Islamic terrorists are really alienated Democrats. I don't believe that for a minute. This idea that uh, because the, there's been clamps down, clamp downs on certain people that shouldn't, maybe shouldn't be clamped down. I, I, look, anytime you gotta, you let the government bureaucracy go, they make mistakes and they put people, uh, they target people. They do that. We, we've had our own people targeted here by our own government in terms of the IRS, et cetera, for disagreement. But this, the radical Islamicists that are a threat to us now are not people who believed in democracy, but they were upset that, that they knew someone who was repressed by a repressive government. These are people who have a philosophy, an ideology, like communism did during the, during the Cold War. The fact is that, that communists believed in what they believed in. They believed in a dictatorship of the proletariat. That idea was defeated, but we recognize what that was. Today, mm -hmm. radical Islamic terrorism is affecting the entire world and threatens especially the democratic world. General Sisi, and now, who is now President El Sisi, the fact is, if, he, if his government does not succeed because we have been too idealistic and compared him to other standards, that the Western standards of people who are not under attack, uh, and we lose that, this government to a radical Islamic government, the whole world will suffer and we will be in jeopardy. With that said, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman.